calculate the change in the kinetic energy of the car after it has traveled from point A to B. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what is going on here. So we have a roller coaster car of mass 200 kg with the engine switched off. It travels along track ABC, which has a rough surface as shown in the diagram below. As soon as we hear that it has a rough surface, we know that we can't use the conservation of mechanical energy. Well, technically we can, but I advise not to because it gets a little bit complicated. At point A, which is 10 meters above the ground, the speed of the car is 4 meters per second, as we can clearly see. And at point B, which is at a height H above the ground, as you can clearly see here, the car has a speed of 2 meters per second. During the motion from point A to point B, 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 joules of energy is used to overcome friction. Right, the first question, calculate the change in the kinetic energy of the car. So, at point A, we have an initial velocity. We have an initial velocity of 4 meters per second. And at point B, we have a final velocity of 2 meters per second. We have the mass of the roller coaster car. It is given to us as 200 kgs. So with these three variables, we can calculate the change in the kinetic energy. That is because the change in kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. This will be a half the mass multiplied by Vf squared minus half the mass multiplied by Vi squared. Now it's just a matter of substituting in our equation. So the mass of the object is 200. The final velocity at point B is 2 meters per second. And we square that. Minus a half the mass of the object, 200 kgs. Mass is conserved. And the initial velocity, 4 meters per second. And we square that. So let's go ahead and see what that will give us. So it's a half multiplied by 200. The final velocity is 2 meters per second and the initial velocity is 4 meters per second. This will give us minus 1200 joules. The SI unit of energy is joules. So there we go. That is uh, the first question. Nothing complicated. We just calculate in the change in the kinetic energy. Stick into the basics. Let's take a look at number two. Use energy principles to calculate the height h. Use energy principles to calculate the height h. Right, like I've said, when there is frictional force, I advise not to use the conservation of mechanical energy. So now we are left with two equations we can use. The net work done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. Or the work done by the non-conservative forces is equal to the change in the potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy. It's up to you to choose which equation you want to use to answer this problem. Both equations will work like I demonstrated on the previous video. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this second equation to solve the problem and get my height of h. And you will use this first equation to solve the problem. And hopefully we get the same height. We are supposed to because these equations, one can be derived from the other. But anyway, stories. Let me go ahead and solve this problem. So we are saying that the work non-conservative is equal to the change in the potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy. We have the change in the kinetic energy already from number one, from the first question, which is 1,200 joules. So we have this. We don't have to worry about that. And the work done by the non-conservative force. 
take a look at our problem statement during the motion from point a to b 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 joules of energy is used to overcome friction and that is the only non-conservative force acting on our object so we have the work done by non-conservative forces or the work done by friction in this case because it is our only non-conservative forces what we don't have is the potential energy which we're going to use to calculate the height so let me show you what i'm talking about the work done by non-conservative forces will be minus 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 joules 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 joules was used to overcome friction so minus 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 will be the work done by friction change in the potential energy change in the potential energy is the mass multiplied by gravity everything multiplied by the final height minus the initial height that is how you find the change in the potential energy plus the change in the kinetic energy which is minus 1200 from the first question which is answered so let's go ahead and substitute um, on the change in potential energy we're gonna have minus 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 being equals to the mass of the object of our roller coaster car is 200 kgs the gravitational acceleration 9.8 so let's go ahead and have that there the final height is h and the initial height is 10 meters above the ground right so the final height we have h the initial height is 10 meters plus minus 1200 so as you can clearly see we have one unknown variable so we have solved the physics we are just solving the math now we are basically solving for h so let's go ahead and see how we can do that so let's take minus 1200 to the left hand side we're going to have minus 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 plus 1200 this is going to be equals to 200 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by h minus 10 so let's divide both sides by 200 multiplied by 9.8 this and this cancels out this and this cancels out whatever we do on the right we must do on the left to maintain our equality so let's divide on the left by 200 multiplied by 9.8 let me just put that in my calculator real quick and see what i get uh, i get minus 1.1224 being equals to h minus 10 so h is just minus 1.224 we have one here minus 1.1224 plus 10 and then if we do that we get h being equals to 8.8775 so that will be 8.88 meters so there we go we have the height h using the work done by non-conservative forces so what i want you to do is calculate this height h using the work energy theorem work energy is equal to the change in the object's kinetic energy here we go